Hey everybody, you've got Marcel. For today, I'm going to discuss something that was said to me a long time ago by possibly one of the most toxic women I'd ever been with. I've been making a lot of videos lately discussing some of my past experiences. Things that were not as clear to me before are becoming more apparent now. So I've been trying to make the videos while it's fresh in my mind. It's almost like when you're in the shower and you think of something really epic, but by the time you've toweled off, you've already forgotten it. So those of you who have listened to my recent videos, the woman that had the trophies, the rings that she kept from all the men that have ever been with her or tried to propose to her. Post-relationship, you know, after she and I had broken up, it led to a very unusual friendship. See, the woman had something of a switch. I've mentioned this before, but just to kind of catch people up. When she was in a relationship with someone, she treated them horribly. She raked them over the coals. It was the most miserable experience the guy could have ever had. All of that coupled with her having a voracious appetite in the bedroom. Forgive my details here, but for context. The minute I broke up with her and really stood my ground, it almost like switched a switch in her mind, where I became something of a protected category. She would create the drama in her life, but would go through extra steps to protect me from it. She would tell her friends, boyfriends, not to mess with me, that, you know, any of her drug buddies came along. They said, don't mess with that. Snake, that's Marcel. He's my buddy, don't mess with him. Now, she still had a really interesting jealousy complex, where if I brought a girlfriend around her, she would still become very possessive of me. But as far as any of the drama that she was generating in her life, uh, she made it a, a very conscious and obvious effort to segregate me from it. I don't know if it was just because she wanted to see me as something of a resource or not. It's hard to say, but it, nonetheless, it became something of a very fascinating case study because once I was put in that category, she opened up to me about everything that she was doing with these men, what her game was, how her methods work. It's like I suddenly became a fly on the wall with everything she was doing. She just opened up to me about all of it. Now, she was also something of an obsessive liar, but a lot of stuff can be verified. You know, a whole bunch of what she was saying I could see happening real time. So it was truly fascinating. One of the things that she said to me one time, this is post-breakup, was that I should never be too honest to any woman in a relationship, if any honesty at all. See, whatever a man says is automatically turned against him, and in the context of a relationship, a lot of times when they ask questions about things, they're baiting the guy anyway. So when I was dating her, at the time that I'd been actually dating her, she would intentionally instigate the side of me that had been raised, been trained to be honest, she would use that against me every single opportunity. And it's one of the reasons why the bad boys in her life, the ones that were, you know, toxic men, the ones that didn't have that side of themselves to be honest, got the furthest with her in the long run because there was nothing that she could really use against them. Furthermore, the less of an open book the men were, you know, the more difficult they made it for her to figure them out, the more interested she became, and the harder she tried to be a party to the relationship, actually participate in it. So the liars were more interesting. Even if she knew they were lying, she would try harder to figure them out than she would if a guy was just open and upfront with her about everything. Now, for her, amongst similar other women during my younger years growing up, around the high school time frame in my life, I was bombarded by situations where my honesty was getting used against me. Now, that's not to say that I was doing a great deal of things that were even considered bad. I was actually a really decent boyfriend. Now, of course, a lot of guys would call me blue pill to almost cuck levels, but I made a very good provider. I was taking care of my girlfriends and doing right by them. Though everyone in the world has a moral compass, and some are more north than others. Mine fell in the category of those that are particularly rigid. I had a hard time lying to people. Now, we've all heard the old cliche set up, does this dress make me look fat? But there's more to that. Does this woman look pretty? Is she prettier than me? Do you think we can afford these shoes? Who are you texting right now? It got so bad at times where almost every question out of their mouths was a, was a trap. There was no way to win and no way to answer correctly. For most men, the answers that they're supposed to give are almost automatic, or at least for the average alpha male, they would be automatic. They would know what to say. 
And in a lot of cases, it doesn't matter what they say. Though for a man who's vested in the relationship, the answers to those subtle little questions can mean the death or survival of their entire world. Well, for me, I stumbled across the answer almost in a sense of when my mind finally broke to all the games. Now, I don't mean broke in the sense that I couldn't handle the pressure. It broke in that I found a way around being completely honest, so I was true to my morals while also preserving the relationship. It came down to basically repeating back the worst case scenario to them whenever I was asked a question, going on the extreme side of whatever their worst fear would be whenever I was asked. A lot of times, the sarcastic, dry answer that I gave, extreme or not, was actually being honest. Let me give you an example. I want to say it was TFM who had the whole does that dress make me look fat comment and his way of replying was only when you're wearing it, babe. Something along that lines. Which is honestly pretty good. For me, and granted it might have been just the women that I happened to be with, their personalities, I had to take it a step further. When they asked a question like that that was obviously bait, I would insult them. And it didn't really matter whether or not what I was saying was true. So does this dress make me look fat? And I'd look at him and say, well, obviously. But I would do it with a toothy grin to where it was clear that I was joking. They'd ask me, you know, hey, can we afford these shoes? And I'd scoff and say, well, not for you. Might buy them for that girl over there. See, the thing is, and what I meant when I said my mind broke, is I got so sick of all the constant traps where there was no right answer that I said, screw it. If I'm going to be wrong no matter what I say, then I'm going to go overboard and be as wrong as I possibly can. It was lightning in a bottle. The harder and the more clever I became with my insults, the more interested the woman would become. When she'd ask me, who are you talking to on the phone? I would be like, oh, your sister, because she's hotter. It had the remarkable effect of breaking down her confidence in such a way that it actually strengthened the relationship for the time being. Now, the drawback to this kind of technique or method when it comes to dealing with relationships like that, and I'm not trying to come across as a relationship coach, and allow me to explain why, it's a double-edged sword, just like anything else. Such comments have to be maintained in order to keep on the persona of that kind of personality, which, you know, arguably could be a jerk, an a-hole, right? Eventually, it starts to grade on them, meaning it becomes frustrating, irritating. The very personality traits that initially pull them in and make them interested, make the person seem something of a challenge, perhaps. Kind of like the dick with a good heart. Just like anything else, that's gonna get old. And eventually, it becomes ammunition to be wielded right back against the guy. See, the truth of the matter is, when the woman decides, when she has come to the decision that she wants to be out of the relationship, it doesn't matter what methods the guy has, how he acts, what he does in order to keep her around, she's gonna have an excuse for it. If any of you have ever played, I'm pretty sure everyone has, those simple RPG games where you get to pick a combat style, you know, archery, melee, magic. You know the ones I'm talking about. Every method has its weakness, and every method has another form that would tear it down in a matter of seconds. The flaw to being an asshole in the long run is that you're an asshole. It is extremely easy for her to turn around and just put a spotlight on the very thing that was keeping her interested in the first place. And then everybody turns against the guy. So for me, what did I do? I became something of a jerk. It was the only way that I could cope with the nonsense that they were throwing at me constantly. And in the short term, that really worked out for me. Parts of it even kind of carried over into my personality today. I still maintain something of a dry, sarcastic facade with everybody I interact with now. Though for those of you who are thinking that maybe switching between those different attitudes, you know, nice guy, jerk, provider, you know, something of being like a male chameleon that can jump back and forth between whatever the woman wants, that doesn't work either, because then the main excuse she can have is that the guy is too unpredictable, too undependable. The truth is that there really is no method to keep them around. There isn't. When they want to leave, they're just going to come up with an excuse to do so that'll be justified in society, amongst their peers and family, and there is nothing the guy can do to stop her. So what's the point in this? What's the summary of this video? 
Whenever we're interacting with others, whether they be girlfriends, friends, family, we should recognize whether or not we use a sarcastic method to deal with it or not. We should recognize when our honesty is being used against us. This may parallel with this concept of, you know, nice guys finish last, they always get the crap deal. While I'm certainly not condoning dishonesty to survive, there comes a time to recognize that too much honesty, especially, will come with a price and is presented within our current culture as a weakness, a disadvantage amongst those who are so willing to frivolously lie at the earliest opportunity. For those of you who have listened this long, here's a sneak preview of a video that I haven't published yet, discussing female nature when it comes to men not being their type and how broken that dynamic can be. As a final thought on this video before I go, Aside from just recognizing when people are using our honesty against us, for those of you who might be dating or considering dating, perhaps you just stumbled across my video by accident, recognize that relationships follow a process. Even in the best case scenarios, they have a beginning, a climax or a high point, no pun intended, and an ending. Now it's possible in very rare circumstances that a relationship can extend beyond that of the lifespan of those involved. And you know, hooray for them. They won the lottery. That's awesome. But for basically everyone else, a relationship is more like a book. It has a back cover to it. It's going to end. Whether or not you enjoy the story, it's not gonna last forever. And that's the truth of basically all of them. And I can think of a lot of relationships I've had as well as a lot of books that I've read when honestly, knowing the ending, I should have just put it down halfway through when it was at its high point. If I really knew that it was not going to last or that I was gonna hate the ending, I should have walked away at a moment of happiness. As twisted as that sounds. I mean, you either fold when you're ahead or you sit at the table long enough to lose. In retrospect, when I was being the biggest dick in the world and everything was a state of euphoria with my relationships, probably would have been the best time to walk away from them. Aside from ending things on a high note, it would have been truly hilarious to see the look on their face. Of course, nowadays, that kind of behavior would get you me too and falsely accused, so there really isn't many ways to win anymore. Let me know down below what you guys think. How big a part of your past relationships did honesty play? And how was it used against you? If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, you've got Marcel.